Hello, I'm David Sparks, and thank you for checking out the free sample of the Keyboard Maestro Field Guide. Keyboard Maestro is an application that I have wanted to cover for years because it's just so powerful. And once you can get your arms wrapped around it, you can automate all sorts of things with your Mac. Well, that was the goal with this field guide. I'd like to think I accomplished it. I'm real happy with the way it came out. I've got some sample material attached to this video, so check it out and see what you think. And if you like it, head over to learn.macsparky.com and get yourself a copy. Thank you. Let's take a minute to talk about some keyboard maestro concepts. When I told people I was about to make a keyboard maestro field guide, everybody was really happy because everybody's confused by this app, but it's not as difficult as you may think. Keyboard Maestro runs on a simple principle. For every Keyboard Maestro script, there is a trigger and there is an action. For instance, if you throw a switch, it turns the lights on. Well, think about doing that on your Mac with just about anything on your Mac that can be controlled. For example, if I hold down the keyboard shortcut, Command, Control, Right Arrow, then it moves the current window to the right side of the screen. In fact, that's one of the scripts I'm going to share with you in this field guide. Here it is right here in keyboard maestro language. The first thing you've got is your trigger, and that's holding down control command right arrow. And then the next thing you have is your action. Move the current screen to the right side. And this may look a little confusing now, but trust me, by the time we get to the end of the screencast, this is going to be really easy for you. The thing about Keyboard Maestro that intimidates people, though, is the sheer number of triggers and actions. There are so many ways you can trigger a Keyboard Maestro script, and there are so many actions you can take once you put it. It's like if you gave someone a box of Lego with instructions, it would be very easy to build that Lego. But if instead you gave somebody all of the Lego in the Lego store in one big box, then they'd be a little confused. And sometimes I think this is what Keyboard Maestro feels like. It's giving you so many tools that you don't even know where to start. Well, that's the goal of this field guide. I'm gonna show you how to get started and some of the cool things you can do. Not only can you download the scripts I'm going to share with you, with this, you're going to know how to build your own. So how is this organized? Uh, there's several sections. The first is gonna be all about triggers, what they are and how they work. The next section is going to break down all of the available actions, give you some descriptions and some samples. Then I've got a separate section on palettes because they're so useful. I thought they deserved their own section. And once you get through that, you're going to find one of the hidden features of Keyboard Maestro a lot of people don't understand. Then we're going to talk about debugging because there is a little bit of programming in here. But trust me, by the time we get there, this is not going to be too much for you. And then my favorite part of this entire field guide, it's basically all of my favorite scripts. I'm going to break them down for you, show you how I built them, give you download links, and teach you how they work. Hopefully you'll be able to use all of mine and maybe make a few of your own. Then we're going to go through the settings and finally we'll get to the conclusion. Right now you may feel like you've got Lego all over your desk right now, but don't worry about it. We're going to put these things together and make something awesome. So what are we waiting for? Let's go. All right, let's build our first keyboard maestro macro. I've got the application open. We're going to create a sample group. So go down to the bottom button here and hit the plus sign. And we just created a group. And if any of these steps are confusing, don't worry about it. We're going to explain all of them in later videos, but I just wanted to make one to begin with. We're going to give it a name, sample group. And then inside that sample group, we're going to make a simple keyboard maestro script. Hit the plus button again. And we're going to make this one to hide all applications. Have you ever looked at your desktop and seen it as a complete mess and just wanted to hide everything? You can hide apps by hitting Command H on the Mac, but what if you wanted to hide them all? So we're going to say hide all. We're going to create a trigger for that. It's going to be a hotkey. And we'll type in Control Option Command H. And now I've made a trigger. So I've hit Control Command Option H, something needs to happen. And in this case, I want to hide all the open windows. So now I'm going to click new action and it's going to open up this list of actions and you can get lost in this list, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do a search. Just type hide and you can see there's a command for hide all applications. I'll double click it and it's just been added. There's some complications here. If you want to add some to an excluded application list, we're not going to do any of that stuff. 
we've just created a simple action that you hit Control Command Option H, it hides all applications. Now let me mess up my desktop and show it to you in action. Okay, now I have a messy desktop. I've got a bunch of apps here. Let's say the day is ending and I want to just hide them all and leave it clean. I'm going to hold Control Option Command H. And just like that, it's clean. This is a really simple example. We're going to get to stuff much more complex as we go through the course, but I bet you can already see how useful Keyboard Maestro can be. Okay, let's start our exploration of Keyboard Maestro triggers. And the most important of those are really the keyboard-based triggers. So we're going to go ahead and create a group, and we'll call that group a uh, sample triggers. And now we've created it right here in the groups list and we're going to create a macro inside of that that we're going to call keyboard triggers. I really think that keyboard triggers are the most important type of triggers I use in Keyboard Maestro because it's just so easy to fire these things off with your keyboard and I'm going to talk more about the ways I do that after I demonstrate a few. But we've created a, a macro here for keyboard triggers and this Tutorial is going to be all about creating those triggers, but we need something to happen on screen. So I'm going to add a couple actions here, uh, text related. So we're going to make one. I just searching text here. There's display text. That's what we want. And we can do that a couple ways. Uh, we can say boom. And we can say display large text. And I'll just show you what it looks like. Whoa, that fills the screen. I'm not sure we want to do that. So we're going to switch that over to display text in a window. So let's test that. There it is. A window pops up that says boom inside of it. And just for giggles, we're going to say speak text as well. I can type in the text here. We can pick a voice. I'll pick Alex. And let's test that. Boom. All right. Alex said boom. How do you like that? Okay, so we want to set that now. We've got an action, let's do some keyboard triggers, which is the whole reason we started this. Like I said, my favorite is the hotkey trigger. It works so great. Um, I'm going to create one for this, which is gonna have the B key attached to it, but it's also gonna say Control Option Command. That's the three keys to the left of the space bar. So I hold all three of those down, I press B, and now I've just added that here. Uh, control Option Command B triggers the boom command, and it's turned on, so everything should work. So I'm going to test it out. I'm going to hold down the three keys, hit B, boom, and it worked. I just held down the key combination, and there you go. This combination of Control Command Option plus one letter is a great one because applications don't generally use that, and you've got the whole keyboard in front of you to work with that. And if you've got an extended keyboard like I do with a number pad, that gives you even more options because all those number pad keys register differently. Let's see here. I'm going to change it to Control Option Command 3. And you can see it's Keypad 3. It's not the number 3. Just think about that. It's a good reason to get yourself an extended keyboard if you've been putting it off. But I'll go ahead now and, and try that out. Control Option Command 3. Boom. And it's still working. And I can already tell this, this voice thing is going to make me crazy. I'm going to select that, get the little blue outline around it, and press the Delete key. And now I will just see Boom. I will not hear it. Uh, so there you go. The, the simplest method is this key combination, and I use this all the time. It's my favorite way to do these things. Now, as a quick aside, you can also uh, add a super key to your caps lock key. And I got this trick from my friend Brett Terpstra. Brett Terpstra is an automation nerd. He co-wrote two books with me about Mac tips, the 60 tips, volume one and two. And he came up with the idea, or at least published the idea, about using the hyper key. And that's taking the caps lock key and turning it into control option command shift. So all four of those keys held down gives you a whole nother set of keyboard shortcuts that nobody else uses. And Brett did this by using an application called Carabiner Elements. I'll put a link in the description of this specific course. Brett actually went through and showed you how to change the JSON file and make it all work. Well, good news is it's got even easier than since Brett did it. This is the downloaded Carabiner Elements application I got from the link I shared below. And if you go over to the Complex Modifications tab, 
you can say add rule. And it's got a couple built in. And one of the built in ones, which I've already enabled, is this one change caps lock to command control option plus shift. All I had to do is turn that on. Once I did that, now my caps lock key operates as shift control command option all held down at the same time. And that gives me a whole nother set of keyboard shortcuts I can use in Keyboard Maestro. So now I'm gonna go back to this keyboard triggers one. And uh, in fact, I'm gonna add one more trigger because you can have multiple triggers even of the same sort. And I'm gonna hold down my caps lock key and then press B. And you can see when I did that, it used, because of carabiner elements, instead of saying caps lock B, it says control option shift command B. And even though that's a lot of modifier keys, I'm easily pulling it off with just my caps lock and my B key. So one more time, caps lock and press B, and then I get my boom again. So that's one way you can do these things with these hotkeys. And like I said, put the carabiner elements installed between that and the option control command, you've got a lot of stuff to work with. You've got a lot of real estate on your keyboard. And once again, if you have the extended keyboard with a number pad, it gets even better. So I've got those enabled. Let's try the next type of keyboard related trigger, the typed string trigger. And this one lets you fire off a keyboard maestro command just because you type something in. And I'm gonna go semicolon B. Boom is only four letters, I gotta keep it pretty short. But if I hit semicolon plus B, it's gonna make this thing happen. So uh, I'll hit tab key and then hit semicolon B and it happened. Now, when I did that, you heard there were some alerts because I wasn't in a text box on my Mac. And usually the Mac gives me an alert when I'm trying to type and I'm actually not in a text box. It's for this reason that I'm not a big fan of using the typed string trigger for keyboard maestro macros. I, it just doesn't work a lot of times because I'm not in a place that I have to type. I hear all those alerts, it gets confusing, and I've got plenty of real estate left to use just hotkeys to do most of this stuff. Where it does work, however, is if you want to do text replacement type macros. So I'm going to go back now and close this out and close that. And now that we're in this group of sample triggers, we're going to make another sample trigger. And this one's going to be a text replacement. One of my favorite Latin sayings. Now I'm going to create a trigger and we're going to use a type string, semicolon Rs. So now I've created a text replacement macro, but it's not really doing what I want because rather than display text in a box, what we want to do is take that text and just type it. And you can do that here, just change it to insert text by typing or pasting. We're going to use pasting, that works just as well. So now I'll open text edit. And then I'll go semicolon Rs, and I've got my text replacement. People often ask me if you can use Keyboard Maestro as a text replacement application, and the answer is yes. However, it's not as powerful as something like Text Expander that has macros and JavaScript and a bunch of cool stuff. I, I generally prefer Text Expander for text expansion, but if you're just doing basic stuff, you can do it fine with Keyboard Maestro. Regardless of whether you use hotkeys or type strings, you'll be surprised how often your keyboard maestro macros are easily triggered with the keyboard and just how useful it is. Make sure you understand this as you go forward because it's going to be something we use throughout the entire course. The Keyboard Maestro clipboard is actually very powerful. It can hold a history of items you've selected. And in section six, I've got a whole video on how to get the most out of the Keyboard Maestro clipboard. But this screencast talks about actions with the clipboard and you can perform specific actions on the content. So I'm gonna add a new action here in this clipboard actions script. And you can see I've already selected the clipboard and there's all these things I can do. You know, we've got the normal cut, copy and paste but you can also set it to text. We can set the clipboard to a past clipboard, which you'll see better in the section six chapter. You can delete the system clipboard. That's one that is useful after maybe you type in a password and you wanna get it off of your clipboard. You can 
cut the name clipboard, you can paste it, you can apply styles to a clipboard. In fact, that's something that we use at length in the text actions that I cover in section six, where we can take the contents of a clipboard and say, okay, we'll take the system clipboard and we will apply a strike through to it, or we'll make an underline on it or change the color. You can also run it through the BB Edit text factory if you have that. There's a filter that you can apply to the contents of your clipboard. And these are really great, again, for text tools. And once again, I have a whole screencast on that later. So just to give you an idea, there's a lot you can do to text on your clipboard here in Keyboard Maestro. And then finally, they have the usual suspect search and replace, but search and replace using regular expressions. The display clipboard is a separate action, which you can do where you can see this historical clipboard much better than what the Mac OS has built in. And we're going to talk about that at length in this video I've been teasing throughout uh, this screencast in section six. The big point of this one is that once you put something in your clipboard, you can use these actions to perform some magic on them. Frequently, I go to coffee shops and libraries to get work done, and I always go in there with a specific plan. Usually, it's a particular client contract, or it's a Max Sparky post, or something I want to just get done at that remote location. And the problem is I get there, and I get distracted, and things don't happen the way I want, so I made a script to help me out. And this one is triggered several ways. I can trigger it with the hyper key and the C key. In my head, that's the coffee shop mode. Um, but it also triggers automatically when I go and connect to a wireless network that has the name Starbucks, Pete, for Pete's Coffee, or library in it. And these work for me. If you go to different coffee shops or different places you want to use this, you have to change these names. But any one of these triggers can fire off this script. And when it starts up, it does a few things. First, it quits TweetBot, so I don't get tempted. And it quits Slack, which is a place where I do a lot of my communications. Uh, the next thing it does is it toggles the sound mute on. Uh, there's nothing worse than being in a coffee shop or a library and having, you know, Miles Davis start, like, playing out of your computer. And then you want to uh, hide all applications. And I do that for a reason, so I uh, I close out the social media, I turn off the sound, I hide all the applications, and then I run the setups palette. That's that separate script, and I cover that in a separate screencast, just I'll invoke it here. It just opens up that little palette. So no matter what I want to do, I can push a button and it'll set up my screens for the way I want to do that. This is a great little script. If you work remotely, you're probably going to have to tweak it a little bit to your preferences go crazy. Okay, that does it for the uh, free sample. There is some more sample materials below at the bottom of the course description. I hope you like it. I'm really happy with this field guide. It's 76 videos, four plus hours of content and downloadable scripts and Keyboard Maestro so you can play along with my scripts as you're learning. And there's just so much Mac automation. If you're ready to get serious about automating your Mac, this is the course for you.